Hi everyone, so today we're going to have a look at Production Possibility Frontiers, also known as PPFs. Um, and just to start you off, there's a couple of questions there at the bottom. While you're answering those, make sure that you explain your reasoning and then think about the economic concept it shows. So you've got £500 to give to charity. Which two charities would you donate the money to and how are you going to split the money? So how would you, um, how much would you choose to give to each of those charities? So pause the video just for a couple of minutes just to answer those questions. OK, so we're going to move on to have a look at what PPFs are. Um, so the production possibility frontier shows the maximum potential output of an economy. So if it's using all of the resources it has, how much of each of these goods or services can it then produce? So it shows different combinations of economic goods and services um, and what they can produce with the scarce resources that they have. So it links together really nicely the previous topics that you looked at in the economic problem of choice, scarcity and opportunity cost. So PPF is a diagram and there's an example of one in front of you here. We're just going to talk through this. So that blue line there is the PPF and on the axes we've got capital goods and consumer goods. So this economy can produce a combination of consumer goods and capital goods. So we've got three points that are on the PPF. They are points A, point B and point C. And as they are on the PPF, they all show efficient combinations of capital and consumption goods. So if you're producing at all of those points, A, B or C, then you are fully utilising all resources that you have to produce as much either consumer or capital goods with your scarce resources. Let's now have a look at points D and E. And points D and E are inefficient combinations of capital and consumption goods because they don't fully utilise their resources. So this economy can produce more consumer or more capital goods at points D and E if they then just shifted those onto the PPF instead. And then we've got point F. Point F is an unattainable output combination. However, you may be able to attain this point if your economy grows, which we'll have a look at a little bit later on. So the PBF also shows the types of opportunity cost. So we've got points B and we've got point A on this PPF. Both are efficient combinations of output. And we are going to assume this economy was originally producing point at point B and they want to then produce and change their um, production and produce at point A. So the opportunity cost of employing more resources in capital goods productions so producing at point A, is expressed in terms of the consumer goods they would need to give up in order to produce more capital goods. So to produce an extra 100 units of capital goods, so to move from producing 200 at point B to 300 at point A, they would need to give up 30 units of consumer goods. So therefore, in order to shift their production from B to A, they are going to give up 30 units of consumer goods, but now be able to produce an extra 100 units of capital goods. So earlier we said that point F on, a, on, a PPF, on that PPF was not attainable, however it may be. And that would be attainable if we had um, economic growth. So economic growth is an increase in the output level of an economy. And it is shown by a shift of the PPF from the inside PPF, which is the PPF on the left. And that's then going to shift to the right PPF, the PPF on the right. And that has shown economic growth. So growth can occur when there's an increase in the quantity of resources available or the quality of resources available. And there's just some examples down there for you. As well as having economic growth, it can also decline. And that's when there's a decrease in the output level of an economy. And decline can occur when there's a decrease in the quality of resources or a decrease in the quantity of resources. And again, there's some examples there below for you. If you have economic decline, that would cause your PPF to shift to the left. So you can now at every single point produce less capital and less consumer goods. So what we've now got here for you is just six questions for you to answer. And um, so you're going to draw a PPF. You're going to have um, public goods on 
your vertical axes, private sector goods on your horizontal axes, and you're then going to follow those questions. You could answer all of these questions on one PPF. However, I would encourage you to make this PPF half a size of A4, um, just to make sure that you can then plot all of those um, different PPFs on there. So pause the video here, that should take you between five and seven minutes. So that should have given you a little bit of time to answer those questions. Now let's have a look at some key terms. Two key terms to think about when we're talking about PPFs, but this also relates to some later on topics that you look at in micro um, when we look at supply and demand, and then in year 13 when you look at cost and revenue curves. So the first one is a movement. So a movement is when reducing the amount of good A um, would cause you to be able to increase the amount of good B that is being produced. Or you can shift your curve, and that's when the entire PPF increases or decreases, so more or less of good A or B are produced at all levels. So one of the really important questions for you to be able to answer is, why is the PPF curve not a straight line? So this is what the PPF curve looks like. Um, so it is not a straight line, it is curved. We're just going to go back to the example of A and B when we're moving from point B to point A. And this is why your PPF is not straight. So as we transfer more resources between industries, so transferring from consumer goods to producing capital goods, the opportunity cost of producing capital goods starts to increase. So moving from point A to point B, we gain 100 units of capital goods, but we lose 30 units of consumer goods. So businesses and countries are not equally efficient at producing both of these goods, so consumer and capital goods, because they specialise in the production of one of those. And then that introduces us to the concept of the law of diminishing returns, which says that as more resources are transferred, the efficiency of those resources fall, which is why your PPI curve is not straight. So there's more examples of some activities that you can complete on our test page and that is the end of your PPF video for today. So thank you very much for watching.